What's up, y'all? Gotta talk with y'all. Just waiting on people to come on in. Got a little treat for y'all. Even if y'all don't come in, it's still gonna get uploaded to YouTube. Promise I will. Gonna make sure I'm living it better. Yes, I honestly will. I made a promise to God. I'm gonna be honest to God. Look, let's do this. No matter what happens, I'll be honest with God. That boy be just sticking up. Oh well, that's expected. Still growing hair out, so look like a little alfalfa right now. Oh well. Um. So, what I'm uh, talking about today, this morning, is the fact that yesterday, last night, uh, me and some fellas. How you doing, Ebony? Um. We were uh, on the other platform across the street, which is uh, it's called Bigo, and um, we were reading scriptures, you know. And I was I was telling the brothers that you know the Most High tells us that us as leaders have led the women astray, and I mean us as men. So um, you know they brought scripture. I let everybody speak, and then I spoke, and I told them I was like, man, you gotta understand. The stuff that we're going through is because of us. Because when I say us, I'm talking about us as men. Because we have led the women astray. You know, we have uh, done things, said things, hurt them, abused them mentally, spiritually, physically. Um, and we, we keep them stuck in sin. You know, there's stuff that we know as men, as leaders that we shouldn't be doing, but we do it anyway. And then we're leading the women because the women do follow us. They pretty much do everything that we do or everything that we have taught them, whether it was in a relationship. Well, most of it is in a relationship. Uh, growing up, you know, if, if there's not a, a man in the house, then there's another man that comes in and takes the place. You know, a, a young girl will go out and um, she will try to find that man or that missing piece to the puzzle and a lot of the times it'd be the wrong one you know now there are times where it, it is the right one uh, but majority maybe 85 to 90 percent of the time it's usually the wrong one and then even to the young men you know we don't have um, fathers growing up because our fathers our uh, dads didn't know how to be a father so we grow up and we end up um and, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places, also looking for love in all the wrong places. And we end up joining gangs, you know, turning to uh, alcohol, turning to drugs, killing one another. Um, it's a numerous of things. Getting into a, a, in a relationship with a woman or uh, even, you know, you got the confused ones out here to get a relationship with, uh, you know, with the same sex. So a lot of it is because of the way we were brought up and the way we were taught. But again, it goes back to the men as leaders. What are you leading your uh, women and your children to? Are you actively in their lives? Are you actively um, uh, appreciating your, your woman, your queen? Um, are you loving her? Are you uh, protecting her? Are you honoring her? Do you respect her? You know I mean, all those things. If you want those things, you have to find those things within yourself. You have to actually want respect for yourself, love yourself. Uh, to honor yourself, honor the father most and uh, first and foremost, <laughs> because um, you know honoring God, respecting God, loving God is to love to not want to disappoint or do wrong or disobey Him. You know, um, it just goes back to like the wilderness. I don't know if a lot of y'all know, but it does. It goes back to the wilderness. Like they were free. You know what I'm saying? They got freed from Egypt. But in the midst of their freedom, 
Now, I'm going to break that down in a minute. Their freedom, they began to do things that they had no business doing, you know. And that's the same thing we do over here in America, in, in, in Babylon. Now, when I say freedom, and I'll go back into it. When I say freedom, I mean you're over here in the U.S. of A. You're free to do whatever the hell you want to do. But you can be dumb at the same time. Free, dumb. You go to the other countries, you ain't free to just do whatever the heck you want to do like that. No. There's some, some law, there's some order, there's some structure that you're raised up doing. But because over there, you know, they see the American dream and they're like, they want to get over here. They got to get a visa card. They got to get all this to get over here because they just want to be free to do whatever the hell they want to do. Like I said, over here, you can be free and dumb at the same time. Those that know we ain't even supposed to be going to the building, the gathering place, the synagogue, whatever it is you want to call it, church on a Sunday, worshiping the sun God. You over here, you're free, but you're dumb. We ain't even supposed to, we supposed to go to the temple on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Only over here in the USA do they teach that Roman Catholicism stuff still to go to church on Sunday. And you think that you actually worshiping your heavenly father. Now, I tell you, yeah, Heavenly Father does wink at your ignorance. But for those that do know the truth and choose to still do what the world wants you to do, you're held accountable for that. You're held accountable for that. But let's let's go back. I don't want to get too far ahead. So what, what we did last night is, you know, I brought the scripture, which we came from uh, Hosea chapter 4, verse 14. I don't know if y'all know what Hosea Chapter uh, 4, verse 14 says, but I'll uh, open it up for you and read it to you. Give me one second. Um, let's see. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 14. Okay. Uh, and it says this. I will not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry, nor your brides when they commit Adultery for the men themselves go apart with harlots and offer sacrifices with a ritual harlot. Therefore, people who do not understand will be trampled. Though you, Israel, play the harlot, let not Judah offend. Do not come up to Gilgal, nor go up to Bethaven, nor swear an oath, saying, As the Lord lives. For Israel is stubborn, or uh, Salakia, for Israel is stubborn like a stubborn calf. Now the Lord will let them forage like a lamb in open country. Now that's uh, 14 through 16, but if you read the uh, first verse, which I always like to start at the first verse, because you get the who, what, when, where's, and why's when you read the fullness of the chapter. So I'm going to actually start here, and I'm in the new King James Version. I can go to the King James Version as well, but uh, this is what it says. God's charge against Israel. It says, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants, Salakia, the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. Now, what that's saying is we're over here in Babylon, in the USA, and he has a charge against his people, his, the Israelites, because we know the truth and we're not teaching the truth to the ones that are in the churches, the, the places, the, the men that are the leaders. There's a charge because you're still teaching what your grandparents and great grandparents and so on and so forth were taught and you're still doing the same thing. But there's no knowledge of God, the true knowledge of God, of what we're supposed to do. Because a lot of them are afraid. Now, it says this in the second verse. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and 
committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. They said, by what? By swearing, by lying, by killing, stealing, and committing adultery. By sin. All that sin that has been committed. That's what goes on. See, we were taught it, and then we did it. And we continue to do it instead of turning from it. It says, therefore, the land will mourn. Is the land not mourning right now? Wake up. And everyone who dwells there will waste away with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. Even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another. For your people are like those who contend with the priest. Who are the priests? This goes back to the message. This is why I said it's us as men that have to step up and take our rightful places. And we have to be accountable for our actions. What have we led our women and our children to? It said the priests. For your people are like those who contend with the priest. Therefore, you shall stumble in the day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in night or in the night, Salakia, in the night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, when it says we'll destroy the mother, don't our mamas cry when we die in the street, when we go to prison, when her daughter gets raped or her son gets hurt some kind of way? The mothers, they are destroyed because the men are the ones that's leading them astray. They keep them stuck in sin, keep them doing the same thing over and over and over again. And the cycle just keep on repeating itself. And then it says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest for me. He's talking to us, man. Rejected knowledge. He will also reject us from being a priest. To what? A priest for him. See, a lot of people right now that I see that are preaching and teaching the word, that call themselves preachers and teachers of the word, are still preaching Roman Catholicism. Still preaching the lie. Telling people about a cross, that Yeshua was hung from a cross, and we all know that he was hung from a tree. Even in the Bible it says, and it tells us not to even worship that, not to even do what the heathens have taught us. And then we get to doing all this pagan stuff, and, and the next thing you know, we stuck in the same thing. Because we learn from our leaders, the ones that's supposed to be leading us to the promised land, to the kingdom. But a lot of them are leading you to hell. I mean, the word says it. It says, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. Capital G, not lowercase g. I will, uh, uh, Salakia, I also will forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sin against me. Forget our children, Why? Because just like the ancestors, he didn't punish the ancestors. He didn't punish um, the ones that he freed from, from slavery. He punished their children. He said, the generations to come, the generations after that, the generations after that, he will punish them because you know me and you chose to do wrong against me. I will punish your children. And that's the same thing that happens to us. Because there's no knowledge of God here. Well, we're just out here just doing whatever the heck we want to do. And our children are the ones that's getting punished. Aren't our children the ones that's dying in the street? That's killing one another? Stealing from one another? Where did they learn that from? They learned it from other men. They learned it from the media. They learned it from the movies. Learned it from the music. Learned how to steal, how to kill, how to get drunk. Get lit. All of them. The young boys and the young girls. Look at the world that you live in right now. Oh, man.
My eye, some just went in, but I feel like I'm about to cry. <laughs> but yeah, um, it says, the more they increased, the more they sinned against me. The more the children they had, the more children they kept on having, the more they kept on sinning. You kept on having children out of wedlock. You kept on having sex with multiple men, multiple women. Why? Because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Because there's no knowledge of God that's being taught. Y'all, excuse me, I'm starting to kind of tear up because I'm passionate about it, you know? There's no knowledge of it. The, 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 they're not telling you to obey the commandments because a lot of them don't even obey the commandments themselves. Mm. So, again, what are we teaching our children? He said, the more they increased, the more children we kept on having, the more... We kept on sinning against him. And it says, I will change their glory into shame. Mm. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. Like people, like priests. Like preachers. Like teachers. Like so-called prophets, preachers and teachers of the word. Pastors. You know? I'm not saying all of them, but I am giving you the truth about it all. How you doing, uh, Mommy Bars? Thank you for joining in. They set their heart on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways. That's what it says. I will punish them for their ways. Who is them? The men. The one who are leading the women astray. And the children. And reward them for their deeds. You'll still get a reward for your deeds. It didn't say what kind of reward. See, what, what seeds are you planting? What deeds are you doing? See, you could be doing wrong and you get rewarded for that. you doing uh, right and you get re rewarded for that because it rains on the, he rains on the just as well as the unjust. For they shall eat but not have enough. They shall commit harlotry but not increase. Because they have seized obeying the Lord. That's the truth. Harlotry, wine, and new wine enslave the heart, the mind. It enslaves your mind. It alters your thinking. It tells you that you're having a good time. It tells you that you're doing what's right. That's what the mind does. See, the heart that it's talking about is talking about your mind. And we can't sit up here and tell our children not to do stuff that we doing. If you out there getting lit and shaking your tail and uh, uh, killing one another and stealing from one another and still leading uh, people astray, how do you expect your children to actually listen to you? How do you expect people to listen to you? Preachers and teachers of the word, prophets. No. Where are you leading your flock to? Are you leading them to a path of hell, damnation? Or are you leading them to a path of righteousness? heaven and it says this my people ask counsel from their wooden idols hey what's going on uh, Remy girl and their staff informs them for the spirit of harlotry has caused them to stray wait a minute it says what my people ask counsel from wooden idols what wooden idols have we been asking counsel from don't we a lot of us when we was young and when we even got older praying to the, the wood, you know, praying to the cross, praying to who is up on the cross, been still living the lie. A lot of y'all don't know that Yeshua was not hung from no cross. He was hung from a tree. But that graven image that you see, that sees your Borgia. And there's, there's truth there, I'm telling you. It talks about it in Isaiah 44, talks about it in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, and Acts chapter 5, verse 30, about being hung from a tree. And then in uh, Isaiah 44, it talks about what? It talks about that wooden idol, that graven image that a lot of us would bow down to and pray to and worship. And their staff informs them. Who's the staff? 
It's, uh, let me read that again. My people ask counsel from their wooden idols and their staff informs them. Who's the staff? The ones in the church. The ones in the church that have told your mothers and your fathers that this is the truth. And that's a lie. And then you go home and you teach this to your children. And the lie is just being taught it. I mean, excuse me, I apologize. The lie is just being taught over and over and over again. The cycle still repeats itself. See, don't nobody want to come to knowledge's panel because they know knowledge going to give them the truth. They know that brother knowledge, Lamel, brother white, pastor, whatever it is you want to uh, name me, going to give them the truth. And the truth hurts. Because when you find this out, like me, when I found it out, I just began to cry because I'm like, man, I have been led astray and I've been believing these lies because I've been following man instead of the creator, the most high instead of Jesus. And so when I started studying or Yeshua HaMashiach, when I began to study, I understood that we all been lied to all these years. Now, on every single platform, y'all see me on all of them from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook to Twitter, Bego, Likey, a podcast, all these platforms. But what I see is people don't want to hear the truth. Uh, well, yeah, they do want to hear the truth, but they want to hear the truth when stuff start happening. Then they want to ask you questions. But instead of getting prepared for this instead of studying to show yourself approved instead of coming over here instead of going over there while all this drama is because everybody else is still following the crowd into drama and they have played the harlot against their god they have played the harlot against their god what's the harlot the whore the whoremonger the prostitute they have played them against the God. Because y'all know what goes on in some of them places. Don't they be touching on the women? Some of them touch on the boys. Some of them touch on children. And then that's when people begin to say, I don't want to go up in there. You want to know why? Because they ain't even following the uh, commands of the Most High. They ain't even obeying what they preaching and teaching. They just teaching it for self-righteous gain or teaching it so they can have sex with the women. Make money off of it. They offer sacrifices on mountaintops and burn incense on the hills under oaks, poplars, and terebinths because their shade is good. Those things that are just named sacrifices on the mountaintops and burn incense on hills under poplars, that's under trees. Therefore, listen to this. Therefore, your daughters commit adult or uh, harlotry. Salakia. Therefore, your daughters commit harlotry and your brides commit adultery. Therefore, men, priests, husbands, fathers, pastors, your children will do what? Your daughters commit harlotry. They go to prostitution. They go to whoredom, orgies. They do all these things, pornography, because the men are not doing what they're supposed to. But then it says the brides commit adultery. Why do the brides commit adultery? Because their husbands are committing adultery. Because they have been taught it. So, you know, that saying, I'm not calling anybody a monkey, but monkey see, monkey do. Remember, they do follow. They do follow. They following you. So it says this. I will not punish. The Most High says, I will not punish your daughters when they commit harlotry, nor your brides when they commit adultery. For the men themselves go apart with the harlots. And offer sacrifices with a ritual harlot. Therefore, people who do not understand will be trampled. 
Now, we already read that. Though you, Israel, play the harlot, though you, melanated people, black people, now I'm talking to y'all, Israel, play the harlot. You act like the whore. You do as the whore does, prostitute and all these things. Men keep you stuck in sin. They're the ones that put it out there because another man gave it to us. Another man gave it to them and another one gave it to them and they gave it to the women and they began to do it. Why? Because they made a living off of it. They made money off of it. They got a bag for it. But your body, women, was not created for that. It was not created for every single man to see. To touch on. It was not created for that. It was created for one man. The man that the Most High ordained for you to have. That husband. But again, we got to go back. Have we waited until we got married? And a lot of us haven't. And that's okay. Because now that you know this truth, now you must wait. You have to. You have to deny your flesh. Because there are some people out here, men and women, that may have a disease, that do things to your body, knowing that they have something. And then they'll give you something, a dis-ease. Now, there is a cure. There's a cure for everything. I'm, I'm here to tell you there's a cure for everything. But you don't have to go through that. Quit doing that. If you know you got something, quit spreading that. Stop making other people's lives miserable. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now, everybody, if you ain't married to that person, if you're not committed to that person, quit sleeping with them. If you know somebody is married, you know that somebody is uh, com in a committed relationship, stop sleeping with them. You have to close one door before you open another. Because a lot of them that's married ain't going to leave their husband or their wife. Ones that's in a committed relationship is not going to leave their partner. They just having fun for a time, but they know. Ain't no, ain't no reason to leave here. I got a roof over my head. I got finances. I got somebody at home that cooks for me or I got somebody that's bringing the money to me. They ain't going to leave that person. Especially if you're not doing better than them. The grass ain't always greener on the other side. So I'm here to tell you, man, if somebody is still teaching you to lie, somebody's still teaching you to lie, you need to quit following them. You need to quit following them for real. Because... You're being led astray. Man, I didn't mean for this message to be, be this long, um, but I, it was mainly about, you know, how us as men on the platform last night, we began to apologize to our women, two uh, of the brothers that uh, follow me, and we're actually on a platform together. Uh, and there were other women on there. It was mainly women and just us three. But um, we we all apologized to them because when I gave them this scripture, the most high basically told us, y'all have to do this. You need to apologize. You need to be accountable for your actions. The women need to see that. The children need to see that. They need to hear that because they're hurting. We're all hurting. But us as men, we got to step up and take our rightful places. Hey, man, I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.